Here we are with Debbie Clark, and we. Uh, this is going to be a special segment because we're going to do something we've never done here on Good Morning Gloucester. And Deb, why don't you explain exactly what it is we're going to do today? I'm going to do a reverse glass painting, also known as Ver Eglomise. Ver Eglomise. Yes, it's a French word. I think it means looking through the glass. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to apply some metal leaf to it. And everybody wants to know how to do this, so... So, show you. so this is the, is this the same technique that you used on the on your pieces that are at the Cape Ann Museum? Yes. The same. Okay. The same. Everybody should see those because yes. they're amazing. That's, those those were done in 1995, and I've jazzed it up a little bit since then. What your technique? I have. I've learned a lot more. Oh really? <laughs> I've added added some more materials to it, so it's more mixed media now than the one down there. Okay. Sharpie. Sharpie, yeah. Sharpie. These are these are big time. All right, I, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna explain to for the people too that your subject today, yeah, is Mister No none other than Mister Paul Frontero. I said no camera, please. No, no camera. camera. Cape Ann, Cape Ann painter. He's a, he is a. Uh, they wanted me to do a nude, but not today. No, no, no <laughs> nudes. All right. All right. So we're gonna set up right here, and De and we'll let Deb take it away. I forgot alcohol, but. Alcohol would help in the case with Paul being here. Yeah, well, it breaks down the Sharpie, but maybe my dinner will do that. Nope. What oh. kind of thinner you use? <laughs> That's recycled thinner. Just mineral spirits? It's just mineral spirits, yep. Yeah. And after a painting session, I pour it into a big jug and I let all the sediment yeah. filter out. And um, a gallon of thinner will last me. A year and a half or so. I use every last bit of it. I don't dump any out. Okay. So I sort of have an idea of where Paul's going to be. But... Okay, so if you make a mistake, you use that thinner and you. I can erase the sharpie. You can erase the sharpie. And if I brought alcohol, it'd be faster. But... I'm going to lay a big tone down, and I think I'm going to use a green and burnt umber. Burnt umber is your darkest yellow. Although people say it's brown, but there's no such thing as brown if you're a painter. Uh -huh. It's always a color. Might be neutral. Neutral is a color. Neutral means that it's not. You make a neutral by taking two opposites and mixing them together. So a red and a green gives you a neutral. Okay. Okay. Means it's not red. It's not green. Somewhere in between. Gotcha. And most people would say it's brown, but if you're a painter, you have to decide: is it a color? What color? What hue? Ah. And so I'd say, okay. It might be, is you're dressed in neutrals, it's sort of leaning towards a green tone. That's why I'm going to use the umber, huh. a dark yellow, and a little bit of phthalo, just to give it a little phthalo green to give it some brightness. I'm going to squeeze it on here. And then I'm going to use my brayer and roll it out. That's a brayer. Mm -hmm. So how long have you been painting? I've been painting since I was 13 years old. I started training with Ken Gore right over here on East Main Street across from the Beacon Marine Basin. And I would pose for his classes in exchange for painting lessons. My father was a painter and uh, I had been going into his, his work and painting on his painting since I was 10 years old, fixing the clouds and stuff that she was not very happy about. <laughs> and finally he said, I think we better get you your own paint box <laughs> and some lessons. And that's when I started. And I painted with Ken Gore, I started at 60, 67. The year I was born. And then... <laughs> And then I, I studied in Gloucester High School with Mary Nugent and Frank Petronzio. 
Frank Petronzio ended up being a lifelong friend and mentor. He died just this year, last yes. summer. Yeah, he's a great, great man. And a great friend, and he always encouraged me and told me I should never quit painting. Now, Debbie, you're going to start classes yourself, right? You're going to start teaching classes? I am. I, um, I ran a drawing painting school in Magnolia for 10 years. I closed it in 2004 and moved, uh, moved, my, moved out of my studio in Magnolia. And now I paint in my kitchen. But people have, are continually asking me when I'm going to start painting, or not painting, but teaching again. So I've been doing it privately, you know, going in and giving studio critiques and... Uh, Helping people figure out how they can take what skills they have if they're taking a lot of you know painting workshops and stuff like that, but no formal training. But they they like it enough they're continuing to paint. What do you do when you're beyond art 101? So I'll go in, I'll give critiques, suggestions of artists to look at, perhaps a palette review, how their studio's set up, what's interfering with them continuing the process of painting, and uh, get huh? them going again. For more, for probably a little bit more advanced person. Or, or yes, yeah. that is for more for advanced. But I do, I, I do teach beginning drawing, and uh, even if I'm teaching painting, I consider painting drawing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't. And there's nothing in Gloucester anymore. There's no, I mean, for the adult education courses, there are no more. Oh, not at the high school. No. no. That used to be an easy way to find something. A lot of people can't find where to go. The, the art associations still have They went to times like closed. And really? Not sure. Uh, how about uh, Rockport? Rockport. Everything's during the day. Everything's... So if you're retired, you can take the classes. If you're a working person, working, not so much. So I've got the <clears throat> Paul now in green. <laughs> a very dark green. So basically what you did, you took a, a, a clear... Thing, and you added. Oh wow, that's kind of cool. So, so if I put it down like this, you can sort of see. Yeah, you can see the other way too, actually. What's going on? But yeah, so you took the. So that that green is your base layer. Is that what you call it? Yep. Yep. And now this is not a sort of a reductive method. And then I'm taking paint away. Is it called negative space, is it, or is that negative something completely space, different? Negative space is the space between things or around things. Mm -hmm. But I don't use that term because on a on a two dimensional panel panel, yeah, everything fits together. Nothing's negative. Everything. Gotcha. I lock everything together. I don't want anything moving around. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Okay, that's gonna be our first clip. Okay.